Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that, and last time we discussed the respectfulness of Jesus. Today, the prudence of Jesus. What kinds of prudence did Jesus demonstrate in his ministry? Keeping in mind that prudence is about good judgment in what you do, and choosing how to make the best choices under the circumstances you're in. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but thy disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the children of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast. Matthew nine fourteen to 15 Jesus points out that there is a correct and an incorrect time for fasting, demonstrating good judgment. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterwards he was hungry. Matthew 4, 1-2 However, while it's not appropriate for the disciples to fast in the presence of the Messiah, the Messiah himself can fast, and did. But the Pharisees, hearing it, said, This man casteth not out the devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself shall be made desolate, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Matthew twelve twenty four to 25 The prudence of Jesus can also be seen in his custom of publicly refuting the accusations of the Pharisees. This shows that public debate is perfectly acceptable when done for the purpose of refuting lies. The more public, the better, since more people will benefit from hearing the lies refuted when there are more people around to hear. But the fame of him went abroad the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities, and he retired into the desert and prayed. Luke five fifteen to 16 Jesus' prudence in prayer is seen in his frequent practice of going off into the wilderness alone to pray, free from all distractions. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Luke 11, 2. However, he also taught a most perfect prayer, the Our Father, to the disciples when they requested instructions on how to pray. So the prudent approach to prayer is to free yourself from distractions while praying, but discussing prayer with other people, especially holy people, is fine too, since it can help us to formulate the words of our prayers better as the Lord's Prayer does. And Jesus, knowing it, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For the poor you have always with you, but me you have not always. Matthew 26, 10-11 In many cases Jesus advises or commands someone to give to the poor, but here we see the other side of that coin, that while almsgiving is praiseworthy, there are things more important than the relieving of suffering, and Jesus is more important. These are just a few ways in which the prudence of Jesus shows through his words in the Gospels. If the goal was to analyze every prudent thing he ever said, we'd be here all day, but there is one more verse I'd like to draw attention to, because it's a response to an instance of the disciples themselves questioning what the most prudent course of action was. His disciples say unto him, If the case of a man with his wife be so, it is not expedient to marry. Who saith to them, all men take not this word, but they to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who were born so from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made so by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. He that can take it, let him take it. Matthew nineteen ten to 12 Jesus embraced a life of celibacy, and advised that if others could bring themselves to do the same, they shouldn't be impeded from doing so. Still, as he said, this choice wasn't for everyone, and not everyone would accept it. 
This distinction in the teachings of Jesus once again shows his prudence and good judgment. Some good choices that we make are required to enter heaven, like honoring our father and mother or loving God, but others can be helpful without being an absolute requirement. So the perfect prudence of Jesus can be seen throughout the Gospels and can help us to also exercise good judgment in the decisions that we have to make. Next time, the feelings of Jesus. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.